give you the next 15 minutes and I'm going to show you exactly how to advance your career to the next level, working in robotics, automation, and AI, and ensure that you never hit a salary ceiling. All right, so there's this method called the three steps ahead that I teach all of my mentorship clients. This is a behind the scenes training that I pulled directly from the mentorship program and I'm sharing it with you guys here on YouTube. So go ahead and give this a try. The only way this will work is if you do it, follow this process and you'll be amazed with how much clarity you'll have as you're trying to advance to the next level. Now, if you'd like to work with me more directly, I do have a few spots open in my robotics mentorship program. You can click the link in the description below to find my 12 minute bonus training. This is where I'm gonna walk you through my entire process, my philosophies, how it's different than a master's degree and how we work together to accelerate your career move in as little as 90 days. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description below. You can watch that bonus training, then follow the instructions to submit your application. Now, without further ado, let's go right ahead and learn the three steps ahead methodology. The way this works, and I'm just going to grab another pen here. This is a another graphical tool that I like to plan out. So you're going to things from top to bottom. And right, right now we're going to draw a diagram that kind of looks like this. And we have three, two, one. And then right here on the bottom. So unfortunately, my pen here was being really noisy in this recording. So I'm just going to quickly narrate. You want to map out your current role, your next role, your junior dream role, and then finally your dream role as it relates to what you want to do in robotics. So a lot of times I work when I'm working with clients, the feedback that I get is that they're looking at their dream role. And the job description has so many different requirements. There are like 10 to 15 skill sets. There's 20 years of experience with multiple degrees. And it almost reads like the job description is three or four different people. It almost sounds like there's just so much stuff that the company wants. And that very well may be the case for the role that you want. And if that is the case, and it seems like there are just so many things you need to learn, it's possible that your dream is a few steps away from where you actually are. And it may not be your next role, but your next role is going to help you feed into your junior dream role, and that is going to feed into your dream role. And so we always want to be thinking about how we can take our skills and put them in the most leveraged way so coming in today, you have so many different skills, which we've mapped out in your action plan. And then we've also talked a little bit about what this dream role looks like and what your requirements are, your lifestyle, your financial goals, maybe you have a geographical goal. Um you know, any number of combinations, the type of work you're going to be doing in robotics. And there, all of these things, maybe your ultimate goal is to hit a certain salary with a certain kind of lifestyle, doing a certain type of work in robotics. And the goal with this activity is to break things down into more manageable, more achievable goals. And that way you are putting yourself on a path where you're, there's alignment and you're not going down a path and choosing your next role. And this next role maybe doesn't fit the longer term picture. And, you know, it's, it's a very intentional activity. Like what we want to do with this activity is start and look from the top and go down through the bottom. So a lot of times what happens is, is when we're looking for new opportunities, we look at what we want and we're looking at it from today up instead of looking at from the future to today and planning backwards. So reverse engineering what we want to be able to do. So I'll give you a quick example. Let's say that we know in 10 years we're going to hit our dream role. What do we need to do in five years? What do we need to do in three years? What do we need to do this year over the next 90 days? 
And if we can start from where we want to get to and we know our destination, then, you know, as engineers, we can map out, okay, well, logically, who's the kind of person that five years from today could work another five years and get into this dream role? And perhaps maybe you're more experienced in this program and maybe you already are coming in, you know, with 20 years of experience. So maybe your timeline is a little bit shorter. Maybe you have a three-year three -year goal to be in your dream role. Maybe it's one year, maybe it's five years, you know? And so what, what you, what you need to do is establish your, your frame of reference and figure out what am I planning for? What is the ultimate goal? And truthfully, the longer your horizon is, the longer you can look and expand your time frame. So like, ideally, if you could, if you could think, you know, 20, we'll say 15 to 30 years in the future. And I know that that sounds absolutely wild. Um, for some of the, for some of the folks that maybe are more or early or junior in their career, we'll, we'll put 30 over here. And if we can kind of look at this incrementally, 2010, and that would put us today, the longer your time horizon is, the more perspective you can have inherently. And then you can just start, you know, adding in these waypoints. And figuring out, okay, if this is the ultimate goal on a 30 year time frame, where let's say we are, you know, ending the ending our career, what do we want to be able to say we did and look back on our career and say that we've accomplished? And if we know the type of goals and the type of um, things we want to be talking about when we are explaining to, you know, the next generation or to families or, you know, to, to people in our network, what we accomplished in our career, then we can use that to figure out, okay, well, what do I need to be at the 20 year mark? Where do I need to be at the 10 year mark? Okay. So between now and 10 years, we have five years. So five years out, what would be a realistic thing to be able to say that I've done? that's going to feed into the next five years, into the next 10 years, into the next you know, 10 years, you know, of the career. And this is kind of the perspective that I want you to have when you're mapping this out. A lot of times the, the answer is to try to do everything all at once. And that's really difficult to do because you're never going to be a hundred percent of a hundred percent because there are just so many variables at play. And so what I would, I would encourage you to do is to take as much of your skill set that you already have and use it to your advantage figure out, okay, these are all the things that I have. And this is, this is why it's so important to have your action plan done before you do this particular activity. Because once you do your action plan and you have kind of a general idea of what your dream is, you can figure out where this dream sits on this timeline, put some numbers around um, your, the course of your career, the lifespan of your career, and where you see this dream coming into play. And be really honest with yourself. Be really realistic. Maybe even be a little bit pessimistic as to how long you think it's going to take that way, when you achieve the goal, you can set another goal and you can keep accomplishing things and you're not trying to, you know, outpace something that was unrealistic to begin with. So once you have your dream, you're going to want to figure out, okay, well, what does this look like? What are the skills that this type of person has to be able to be in this role? And then think to, you know, two roles out. What is the junior dream role? What does this person have to be able to do to be promoted to the dream role? And then again, complete that activity. What does your next role have to look like to be on the same trajectory to be in promoted to your junior dream role? And if you look at this, and I, I made it very like sequential, but over time, you're going to gain new skills. And what ends up happening is you're building this foundation of skills. And over time, you're just adding layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. And that's why this is so important to figure out like, what are you trying to actually accomplish? Because if you know what this destination is, you can be very intentional with which skills you're going to focus on over time. And you can concentrate and get really good at those skills and actually turn these skills into competencies that you can speak to with real experience. And when you're up for the opportunity to get this dream role, you are going to be in a very good position because nobody's going to be able to touch you because you have all of this, 
experience. It's very relevant. It's very intentional. You already have done projects. You've already picked up the ability. You've you're already building up your network. So it's it's almost inherent that you're going to spot this dream role when it makes sense. Now, if you're coming into here and you you already have, you've already kind of quote unquote put in the work and your career has lent itself and, and maybe you were a bit intentional with the path of your career, you're maybe coming in in the middle of the timeline. Maybe you're already sitting in your junior dream role and you have you know, all of the credentials and all of the accolades and all of the right experience that will feed your ultimate goal. Maybe your next role is your dream role. But I wanted to map this out because this question has been coming up quite a bit about like, how do I go about thinking about my dream role when it seems like my dream role is so far fetched? It's like so out there. And this is the perspective. This is the lens that I want you to take when you're mapping this out. So what I would encourage you to do is grab a piece of paper or an iPad or something that you can actually draw this diagram out, or you can use a um, like a, a diagram tool if you'd like, a flow charting tool, and just map this out. Use the same format and start figuring out like what is the name of this dream role? What do I what do I need to? What is the job title? What does it look like? What are, what are the requirements? What kind of skills? How does this person act? And then keep reverse engineering until you get to today. And once you are at today, what we are going to work on throughout this program is getting you into this next role. And in some circumstances, the next role is your dream role. And in other circumstances, depending on where you're at in your career, maybe it's a few, it's a few, your dream role is a few steps away, but getting you into this next role is going to significantly help you build the right foundation so that you're creating the, the role and the career path and the plan that actually makes sense and will help you long term. And then what you can do is you can keep executing the this strategy for the rest of your career, right? Career advancement and continuous improvement and getting better every day is not a one time or a one size fits all or a one one time event. You're going to want to keep doing this over the course of your career. I would recommend continuing the momentum and, and still doing this beyond the 90 days of being in the program and either be very intentional for a few quarters of every single year of your career or just keep keep up the activities that are going to push you forward a little bit every single day for the rest of your career. And I can guarantee you, if you're the one that's putting in, you know, the effort and you're the one that's going through and doing all of the tasks that it takes, you're going to be in that 1% where your slight edge principle, where you're doing that 1% every, every, every single day over the course of the year, you're going to be getting exponential growth over the course of your career that's going to compound. It's going to pay you back in dividends and in multiples that you would never get otherwise. The goal with this is to just give you another tool that you can use to, to plan and to actually visualize how and what and why you're moving forward in your career, what that role could look like, and how to best stack the decks and put yourself in a very leveraged position so that you can get exactly what you want in your dream robotics role. So go ahead and create a version of this that is tailored around you and your background. And if you would like my help, you want me to review it, you can RSVP for one of the client calls. Just let me know that you've created your three steps ahead map and you want you just want some feedback or you want some guidance and I'm happy to help. And that's a wrap on the three steps ahead process. I hope you found it valuable and useful to advance your career to the next level. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. It lets me know that you're interested in this kind of content. And if you want to get notified for when I release new videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. And finally, if you want me to be your mentor and get direct feedback to help you advance your career within the robotics industry in as little as 90 days, go ahead and check out the link in the description. There's a 12 minute bonus video that walks through my entire process, as well as the instructions to submit your application. Now, if you're not sure that I'm a good fit to be your mentor, that's totally okay. Go ahead and check out these videos.